Cosell reporting, awaiting the start of the World Lightweight Championship fight. At this moment, the fighters in the center of the ring, that's Roberto Duran. The instructions have just been rendered. And the referee is Isidro Rodriguez of Caracas, Venezuela. That's Edwin Berluet, the classy boxer. The judges are Sergio Lay of Cologne City, Panama, and Frank Adams of Pennsylvania. The bell for first round action. Berluet in the white trunks. You'll note the steady movement in this fighter. Duran will be the pursuer. Berluet will try to score with quick flashing lefts and occasional right lead. Sometimes in his footwork, he'll remind you of Ali. The two have fought once before as they instantly set a brisk pace. That was September 30th, 1975. Duran was awarded an unanimous decision, but the crowd didn't like it one bit. The two are bitter enemies. They have flung insults at one another, insults at each other's families. All this is a prelude to this return match, but not by way of the usual hokum, tough, thumping buildup. This hatred between them is unfortunately genuine. First round action. You can see that, or rather, I'll fill you in on the time. We are a little more than a minute into the first round. Scoring is on a five-point must system. The mandatory eight count in effect. And of course, the three knockdown rule waived because this is a championship fight scheduled for 15 rounds. No saving by the bell. The fighters wearing eight-ounce gloves. The ring decently sized. 18 and a half feet. So there's the backdrop. Now to the action. It's in that kind of infighting that Duran wears an opponent down. Duran has shown many times his stamina. And in the infighting, he will use the arms, the elbows, the shoulders, all to weaken the opponent. We have a minute, five seconds left in this, the first round. Here you wet, the white trunks, Duran, the purple trunks. Roberto, an incredible fighter, really. 59 victories in 60 fights. 50 of them by knockout. One loss. That, a non-title fight, a decision to Esteban de Jesus back in 1972. There you went. Baking, baking, moving Duran into a corner. No blows exchanged. Right hand corner of your screen, counting down now to the end of the first round. Duran with a smile more like a leer on his face as he fights. Totally confident that he can demolish however long it takes the adversary. We are counting down to the end of round one. When thirst. The action has just begun in round two of the World Lightweight Championship fight. Where you wet in the white, Duran, the defending champion in the purple. Action in the first round was brisk, though no damage was done. The flashier fighter, where you wet, the more punishing fighter, Duran, at least in the first round. the way Barat Berriouet likes to get that long flashing left in there dot away and that's the oh a good right by Duran a good right caught Berriouet on the left side of the face the lower jaw and it stung Berriouet that quick right of Duran's that so pummeled Esteban de Jesus back in 74 in Panama City Mention that fight particularly because De Jesus is the top-rated challenger and the holder of the WBC version of the title. This is for the WBA version. Get out, get out, get out. Third man in the ring. Isidro Rodriguez of Caracas, Venezuela. Right, 
the corner. Measuring him with a left-right combination. I'd like to alert our local stations that at the end of this round, we'll be taking a station break. This is the second round. We've got a minute to go in it. Duran has scored once with a brisk snapping right to the lower left jaw of Virouette. And then with Virouette in the corner. Oh, Virouette left himself open for that. He missed. The left was off balance. And you can see Duran tigerishly move in, although not able to do real damage and evidence of Duran's quickness of pursuit. 30 seconds left in this second round. And Duran, all the time, the aggressor, unendingly so. Veruet, not... Oh, Veruet with two quick lefts. Not staying away as he should. We'll be back with more of ABC's Wide World of Sports after this word from our local stations. Chet, the static is killing me. I know you can't do anything about it. Just Duran defending his lightweight title against Edwin Virouette. Virouette, the classy, flashy boxer. But Duran giving him in the first two rounds little opportunity to use his normal style. And Virouette, oddly, apparently willing to seek to mix it up. And he has paid the price, therefore, particularly in the second round, did Duran score. You don't see Virouette moving around the ring, Ali fashion. Look at that. On the inside, Virouette has to be the loser against the more powerful Duran. Remember, too, as I stated, five-point must system of scoring here in Pennsylvania. Referee is from Venezuela, one judge from Panama, one judge from Pennsylvania. I emphasize that because we had a behind the scenes. Oh, on the inside, Duran, although Villouette comes back with lighter left, Duran again scored with a good right. Still, Villouette laughs at him, challenges him. Duran, and Duran has been laughing or leering through much of the fight. In and out. That's it. Now you got him. In and out. You know where to go. This one. You may be hearing from Virouette's corner two uh, notably controversial people in boxing, Al Braverman and Patty Flood. And it's they who are exhorting Virouette. That's it. Now you got it. Now that's the classy Virouette we've talked about. Making Duran miss. Moving about the ring. Backing off. But quick. Low right hand corner of your screen, you see the clock winding down toward the end of the third round. Braverman and Flood exhorting the referee not to let Duran manhandle their man. But in the main, Braverman and Flood are, as always, full of sound and fury and signifying nothing.
coming to the end of round three. In that end fighting, Virulent against the ropes. Duran scores. He can manhandle the opponent. He is unending in his aggressiveness. And Virulent stands there laughing at him. Time to write. We're back live at the Spectrum. The fourth round has just begun. Brisk action fight, though no real damage. Most effective scoring in the second round when Duran measured Virouet once with a combination and scored once with a brisk snapping right that jolted Virouet's head back. Well, it's about the same pattern. Duran the aggressor. But Virouet showing a surprising willingness not to move, to stay away, but to mix it up, as you see right here. as confident as Duran, in some respects more so. Because look at him in this round, flat-footed, willing to mix it up. And if Virouette has a weakness, there's Duran all over Virouette. If Virouette has a weakness, it's the fact that he cannot punch. In his 28 fights with 24 victories, two defeats and two draws, he has scored but eight knockouts. That long left gives him a reach advantage. Ran always seeking to get inside. Very you wet, smiling, laughing, the mouthpiece in evidence. Confidence sustains. Ran all business. This action is, of course, live from the Spectrum in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We have 30-odd seconds left, and this is the fourth round. I must say, Rodriguez of Venezuela, the referee, has had his work cut out for him, but he's doing a good job. His movement steady, his position good. A good snapping left, scored, as you saw, by Virouette. down to the end of the round. That's the end of the round. The end of the round, and I think they're going to come to us on camera. Under any circumstances, after four rounds, with Duran probably holding the edge up to this point on aggressiveness and effectiveness of punching, it's been a good, brisk fight. Earlier, I mentioned the diverse domiciles of the respective officials, the referee from Venezuela, and, of course, one of the judges from Roberto Duran's native Panama, the other from Pennsylvania. We had a behind-the-scenes jurisdictional brouhaha before the fight. The Pennsylvania State Athletic Commission wanted all Pennsylvania officials. The World Boxing Association, lodged in Panama, wanted their officials of their selection. So they selected three, two of whom are officials now because Pennsylvania is a WBA state. And the Pennsylvania Athletic Commission selected, actually named all three, but provided Judge Frank Adams of Pennsylvania. That's the behind-the-scenes story. And Governor Schaaf of Pennsylvania, as we begin the action for round five, Governor Schaaf of Pennsylvania got into the thing, so did Attorney General Kane, and their assurances were made known that everything was right and above board, and they stood behind this bout in every respect. They wanted no jurisdictional squabble to upset the holding of this bout in the Quaker City. So we are into action in the fifth round. Fourth round, I thought, was Virouette's best. 
thought he had an edge in that round. And as I said, Viruetta, tremendously confident young man. And a challenging one on a personality basis. Moran, going to the midsection, came up with a left that scored. Moran, always in pursuit. Sometimes fighting wildly and ineffectively in that pursuit. Always throwing punches. Notice how this round he's begun to go to the midsection a bit. That, of course, to tire the opponent. So that later on, the opponent will have little left. Good right lead. That's what you've got to look out for with Roberto. That right lead. Always one of Muhammad Ali's most effective weapons throughout his whole career. Veruet scored with a quick uppercut to the chin. Veruet, Veruet does not score heavily. not your classic punch. He is your classic boxer. He got in a good right there. But still, Duran came on. This is fifth round action. About 50 seconds left in the round. The crowd is loving this fight. In the way, Virouet uses his feet to seek the victory. He got in a good right uppercut again, Virouet. That's twice he scored with that blow in this round. Hard puncher on, no, that was a brisk blow. And Duran had to feel it. Counting down to the end of the fifth round. for the start of round six. How it goes, L at ringside, coming to you live from the Spectrum in Philadelphia, where a lightweight title at stake. Roberto Duran in the purple trunks, defending Edwin Viruet in the white trunks. Challenge. That's the Viruet we've come to know in the many fights we've seen him. Dance, move on the toes. Steadily to the left, occasionally moving back. Conversely to the right. Then the long flashing left. The right in combination. Seeking to score points. Not to score a knockout. See that long left? It missed, but it is there. It is the weapon to keep the opponent away and at the same time score points. Rand missing with the right. Cedro Rodriguez, the third man in the ring. Sixth round action. Good sized ring for Veruet to move in. 18 and a half feet. Fighters, by the way, are wearing the usual eight ounce gloves. Last week we had six ounce gloves. You can get killed with those. See the way Viruet's moving now? That's the kid we know so well. Bring him up, referee Rodriguez says. Duran must get to the inside to score. Crowd yelled over that Duran right, but in fact it was picked off by Viruet's left glove. Pay no attention to the crowd. They are fans. Less than a minute to go in the sixth round. Viruet, right above us, just winked, smiled. You saw the mouthpiece. He looked at Eddie Brown in Duran's corner and the venerable Ray Arcel, a famous name in boxing training. As if he felt, look, I've got this thing. I'm in charge. I know how to beat this guy. Forcing Duran to miss.
coming to the end of the round. We'll have to break for a commercial. But watching Veruette here is a touch like watching Young against Foreman. We're into round seven here at the Spectrum. Duran the purple, Virouette the white. Lightweight title at stake. Last round, Virouette reverted to the style we've always seen him use. Steady movement on the toes. Off from the other fighter, trying to score with the long left in a follow-up right in combination. Duran always trying to get inside. The smaller man, the lesser reach, but the more powerful man. Once on the inside, Duran holds the upper hand. That was a left lead by Duran and a follow-up right, but they did not hurt. Long left. Veruette flashing out there. It was in the last round that Veruette tried to show disdain for Duran. Fighting against Duran in Duran's corner, he looked over at Eddie Brown in the corner and openly laughed and winked and at Ray Arcel. They're the two who manned Duran's corner. This, again, is seventh round action, and Veruette scored just then. to the belly in tight and then move upward. The wet started to come in and ran into a Duran blow. The wet better be careful coming in of that right lead by Duran. Pinioned in his corner. Duran trying to hurt him. And maybe he is. But Veruet continues to laugh at him and take the punishment. Almost in rope dope style. Take us back to Zaire. A good right by Duran. And Veruet shakes his head. No. Allah Muhammad Ali. I wasn't hurt. That's what he's trying to tell the crowd. But Duran is scoring points. When Duran has you inside like that, watch his head and shoulders. He uses them and registers punishment with them. This has to be a big score for Roberto Duran this round and this fight. We're approaching the end of this, the seventh round. Oceans and bravado don't get your points. Start of round eight. The bell rang. Out came Duran. Veruette wasn't out. Braverman started screaming at the official, claiming that Duran had unlawful matter upon him. Apparently claiming that. You're looking now at Veruette with Patty Flood. Now we finally begin the eighth round. The end of the last round, Duran smiled, leered, felt totally in command. He had a big round, Duran, in the seventh round. Now it's Duran who's doing the smiling and the leering and the taunting. Come on, he's telling Veruette. <laughs> Note the way Veruette is moving. Right lead, the one that he has to be careful of. That's the one Eddie's got to be careful of. Eighth round action. Good left by Eddie. Left and right in combination. The left did nothing. The right scored, but not heavily by Durant. taking a station break. Look at Duran, laughing, taunting. What a quick Eddie Veruette left. Took a little of that smile off. 
nonetheless, it's clear at this point in the fight that Duran thinks he's got it. A good left lead and a follow-up right. And the smile came off Virouette's face. Virouette, for the first time, looking not as he moves there on his toes, but facially a little bit tired. Stamina, it must be emphasized, one of Durant's greatest assets. Eighth round action. And because of that little mix-up at the start of the eighth round, I'm not quite sure that our clock in the lower right-hand corner is right. The information is that the clock is... Oh, look at that. This is another big round for Roberto Duran. No question about it. We'll be back with more of ABC's Wide World of Sports after this word from our local station. just underway. We're a lightweight title at stake. Roberto Duran, the defending champion in the purple trunks. Here you went in the white. It's been a fight of unending motion. It's been brisk. It's been in terms of punching effectiveness in favor of Duran. There have been moments of flashy boxing by Virouette. Each man at times showing disdain for the other. Tactically, it seems to me it was Virouette's task to show his classy movement, to stay away from Duran and score with his long, straight left and his right in combination. But he hasn't been able to do it. It's been Duran's job to get inside. He has a flash of reach. Look at that right as they broke and look at Duran. He is now openly blocking Virouette. Virouette has shown signs in the last two rounds of fading. The grin that was once steadily on his face dissipates. A nosebleed. A nosebleed has been started by Duran against Verouet. This is the ninth round. Once on the inside, Duran dominates. Decisive. Here's that there's a cut on Duran's mouth. Inside the mouth. Lips look a little red to me. A touch of blood. And so it appears. Trying to get a good look at him is back to us now. Again, he's got Virouette against the ropes. Again, he works to the midsection, moves upward, moves back down. We'll go to the corners after this round. This is the ninth round. No sign now of the nosebleed which had begun. Perhaps just a trickle against the nose from Duran's mouth. Eddie Virouette showing courage every step of the way. Totally unafraid of Duran. Completely confident in his own skills. At the same time, facing a fighter who inch for inch and pound for pound is about as good as they can come. 
Roberto won the title back in 72 against Kenny Buchanan. Remember him, the tough little Scott, who won the title in San Juan, Puerto Rico, in 1970, winning it from Ishmael Laguna. Nobody's been able to take Duran since. The end of the round, the ninth round that was, let's go to Roberto Duran's corner. See? Yes, they're looking at the mouth. There was a cut there, but obviously a slight one. Ray Arcel, the old gray-haired man, the venerable one, one of boxing's most distinguished trainers. Many, many years. I had a shaving cut today. I went in the ray. I said, well, let's move over to Edwin Virouette. The shaving story is of scan importance. Now, Virouette appears at this moment relatively unmarked. Much of the pummeling he's been taking in the recent rounds has been to the midriff. That is red. There is also redness on Virouette's back. That's Al Braverman exhorting his fight. There is some red on the upper left part of Eddie Virouette. And for you boxing fans, today in Rome, Italy, Victor Galindez retained his light heavyweight championship. Now we're into 10th round action. Kind of a sneer over Duran's face now. Every round. Virouette now staying away, moving, looking for his opening. Tactically, the only way he can win the fight. The crowd roars as Duran pouring in at Virouette, scores with a right. Good left, good left to the neck by Duran and Virouette felt it. But Virouette fights back. This kid, Virouette, shows me some guts. Still bouncing. I don't know where he gets that remaining verb from. Because beginning with the seventh round, Duran has been pouring it on. Get on quick. Tenth round action, quick, left that scored by Virouet. I don't like to detail each and every blow, but in this kind of fight, to measure the effectiveness of the fight, there was that right again by Durant, and it hurt Virouet. The fighters are directly above us. Still, Virouet dances out to ring center, faints with the left, goes in with another left. Inevitably, Durant gets just where he wants to get, inside. Good left lead by Durant, snapping Virouet's head back. A follow-up left. We've got a minute to go in the 10th round. The scheduled 15 rounds. Eddie Virouet has never gone past 10 rounds. Apparently, he will have the opportunity to do so here in Philadelphia at the Spectrum this afternoon. Again, the right by Durant. Now he comes in, leans his weight against Verouet. At this stage of the fight, can't make Verouet happy to feel that way. Counting down now to the end of the 10th round. Verouet with a magnificent courage. Duran relentless. Counting down now, winding up the round. We'll be back after a commercial break. I We've just begun the 11th round here at the Spectrum, live in Philadelphia. We're a lightweight title at stake. Roberto Duran in the purple trunks, defender. Eddie Virouette, one of the classiest boxers you'd want to see. The challenger, the number two rated challenger. Hasn't fought too much today as he normally does. He wanted to prove, apparently, that he was totally unafraid of Durant. The two genuinely detest each other. And so, he's been willing to trade from time to time punches with Durant. In my view, it's cost him. round action. The 
the crowd roars incessant. I've just been advised that there's been a major college football upset this afternoon. Ole Miss, the University of Mississippi, has upset the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame 20 to 13. What a game we had on ABC earlier this afternoon, that Nebraska-Alabama affair. And we expect a great one coming up Monday night, the start of Monday night football. The Pittsburgh Steelers against the San Francisco 49ers. Back with our announcing team right back where he belongs, the Dan Daru, Dandy Don Merritt. Back to this 11th round action, which indeed has been a let up from the prior three rounds. Duran hasn't been doing the damage he did in the seventh, the eighth, the ninth, and the tenth, the prior four rounds. Where you at, dancing, moving. But I must say, not scoring effective. Never a punch. He must rely on the jab and on the right in combination. He hasn't scored too much with it. Duran telling Virouette now, come on and fight. Berto Duran, Senor Aleta, the man behind him, a distinguished gentleman who took a fancy to Roberto, a very wealthy gentleman, backed him, has put him into various businesses. Duran, a self-sufficient man financially now and hopefully for the rest of his life. And in Roberto's corner, as we've mentioned, Venerable Ray Austin. <laughs> Another venerable one as the action quickens, Freddie Brown. I'll tell you, I admire Eddie Villouet. This fella has courage, and this fella has never let up. We're going to go to Eddie Villouet's corner at the end of this, the 11th round. Villouet, the white trunks, Duran, the first. So the end of the 11th round. There you see in that graphic some of Eddie Virouette's history. He was born in Arecibo, Puerto Rico. Came in at the weight limitation, 135 pounds. He's 27 years of age, 28 fights, 24 victories, two losses, two draws, and a telling statistic, only eight knockouts. As we've emphasized, he is a light puncher. But a beautiful boxer to watch. Moving over to tough little Roberto Duran. A different kind of face. A different kind of fig figure. A year younger. Panama is his native country. And what a record. 59 victories. That one non-title decision loss to De Jesus in September of 72. Here's the bell. The action for round 12. Isidro Rodriguez of Venezuela is the referee. Quickly, Duran got in that right. There you what? Must keep those gloves up and defense that right. Good left there by Duran. Pushing off the opponent there. No word from Rodriguez on that. He separates the fighters. say Eddie has not been able to make that reach work for him the way I thought he would keeping Duran off instead Duran has been able to force his way in remove the usual boxing tactics of Virouette diminish his skills in a word oh a good right by Eddie Virouette a quick overhand right that scored came from nowhere as far as Duran was concerned Almost as if he didn't see it. Now, Virouet has Duran against the ropes. He's trying to work him over. All of this in the 12th round. Virouet, willing to mix it up now on the inside. Took command in that last flurry. Led by that overhand right. Good left by Virouet. Tira, tira, tira 
No question. In this round, he has slowed Duran down. Although Duran keeps punching away the blows by not scoring. Another right by Berriouet. We're counting down now in the final minute of the 12th round. Duran leaning all over Berriouet. Notice no clean, sharp punches by Duran in this round. Good left there by Duran. His best blow of the round. Good left. Eddie coming in at him. Caught that left. Now Eddie uppercutting consecutively against Duran while Duran was against the rope. There is a cut over Duran's left eye. That right did it. Now the blood begins to flow into Duran's eye. We're going to stay and go to Duran's corner as the blood comes down. And there you went as he walked away. Looked at Duran, smiled, leered at him, challenged him, and looked at the flow of blood from Duran's left eye. They're working over Roberto right now. That was a big round for Villouet, his best of the fight. And it came in the 12th round from a young man who had never gone past 10. Watch them work over Roberto's eye. It's the old story. Look at Villouet. They're telling him in the corner, because there's no mercy in boxing, only brutality. They're telling him to go after that eye. As I was saying, it's the old song. The cut above the eye is the dangerous one. It can impair vision. Blood flowing into the eye. Below the eye, no. They don't stop a fight for that. But above the eye, they can and often do stop it. Pray ourselves with last minute instructions to Duran. We're in the 13th round. The fight winding down. You ask for two smallish men in terms of weight to give everything. They've done it in this fight. This is a class fight with two world-class fighters, one a champion. It's about time we had a fight like this. No word from Isidro Rodriguez on what Duran did there. No word. Duran, man handling Viruette whenever he can, wherever he can. Villouet, now willing to come inside, willing to mix it up. No longer even trying to stay away and use the boxing skills because he must work on that eye. That, of course, the whole tactic now. See that overhand right? See him on the inside, Villouet with the right, using the glove, again scoring with the right to Duran's eye. That's the whole fight now. Here you went against that left eye. And Duran trying to work to the inside. Use his superior upper body strength. Maul his opponent and punish him. And Duran showing endurance. Blood flowing out of Berriouet's right nostril now. Not just a touch of it this time. And Duran's eye, despite the punishment, is okay. The cut has not been reopened as we get a good look at it. Most of the round, he's been bent over in two. Pouring inside, working to the stomach. Now he's against the ropes and he's doing the punch. The action is unending. Here you went, measuring Duran with an uppercut. Did you see him? With his left arm, he pushed Duran against the rope. With his right, he scored with an uppercut. Now it's Duran that scored. These two men won't light up. Vince Lombardi once said, you've got to give everything you've got on every play. These men 
are giving everything they've got with every blow. When Lily and I Back beat. live at the Spectrum, Duran against Virulet. This is the 14th round. The world lightweight title at stake. Those of you who have been with us know that you are seeing a classic fight. These two little men of boxing have not let up. Each disdainful of the other. Duran with a cut above the left eye. Now smiling, leering. Coming at Virouet. Duran, totally dominant in the middle rounds. Virouet coming back in the 12th and in the 13th. Once he opened that shot over Duran's eye. But Virouet with blood from his own right nostril. I had said left. Forgive me, I meant right. Although they closed that up between rounds. Duran now, again, the aggressor. Got it. Rodriguez, the referee, separating the fighters. Very wet dance, open with his own right lead there. Score, again, remember, very wet, not a puncher, but a boxer, a light hitter. Must count on scoring points in that fashion. On average, a decision fight. We're a little more than a minute and a half into this, the 14th round. Oh! Again! Again, Duran scores, and again, Virouet stays right in there and comes back, and the two of them have been unabated. Incidentally, for those of you awaiting the Italian Grand Prix, our apologies. The length of the fight prevents us from bringing it to you. Mario Andretti, of course, the winner. Mario enjoying a brilliant year on the Grand Prix circuit. Sorry about that, folks. This is the 14th round. Coming to the end of the 14th. Finally, the action slow. Okay, we're back at ringside. You saw the fight promo. We're looking into Roberto Duran's corner now. They have worked on the eye again. It has not been reopened but they want to make assurance double sure. Treating with it. Over in Virouet's corner, there is fatigue, but there is fatigue in Duran's corner too. These men are, after all, human. They have given of themselves unremittingly throughout 14 rounds. No question now about Edwin Virouet's ability to go past 10 rounds for those who questioned it before the fight. There were those who once said Seattle Slough couldn't go a mile and a half either. This is the final round of the fight. And Duran wants to go out of this fight. Again, the total aggressor. So he starts right in, moves to the inside. Scores right there with a right uppercut to the chest. Earlier, he had scored with a quick, sharp left. Those of you at home who have been scoring, compare your scores with the official scores when they are handed down to us. This fight goes the distance, as one must presume it will now. I would have Duran ahead. And I've been covering fights for 23 years. And I have given up. 
in view of some of the decisions I have seen rendered. Nothing more subjective in sport than scoring a fight. Everyone sees it, or almost everyone, differently. Duran again with the smile and the lair, and Duran scoring with two lefts and a follow-up right. Duran in charge thus far in the 15th and final round. But Virouette, what a performance he has given. Great exhibition of courage. Duran scoring again. Apparently more tired than Durant. Missing with his left. Durant mauling him against the ropes. Referee Rodriguez lets the two men go. Head and head, toe to toe. And Bouillouet was staggered there by Duran left. First time in the fight. And staggered. Now Bouillouet smiling as if to show I'm unhurt. Duran smiling too. But Duran with an apparently grudging respect for this game fighter, Edwin Bouillouet. We're approaching the end of this bout. And Duran has been decisively in charge of this, the final round. There you went, a tired fighter. But fatigue also in Durant. Crowd loved this fight. Durant scoring to the end. That's the end of the fight. We'll be back with the official decision in just one moment at the Spectrum. We're back live at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. Not a soul has moved. The crowd indeed was cheering the fighters. We're awaiting the decision. In ring center is Hidro Rodriguez of Caracas, Venezuela. The referee is handing over the cards, the scores to the ring announcer. And the ring announcer should momentarily be acquainting all of us with the official decision. A question now for the judge from Panama. A question to Sergio Lay about his scorecard. That's what's holding us up. Duran is holding his hands aloft, feeling he is the victor. And by our scorecard, he certainly is. But still, we await the official decision. Now what is holding this up? Never a fight without a late question mark, somehow, somewhere. Freddie Brown, where is the decision? Freddie Brown, the veteran corner man for Roberto Duran. Still no decision. Cards being rechecked. Now, apparently, we've got the decision. The microphone comes down to the ring announcer. Let's pick his natural sound up. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Frank P. Adams, Frank P. Adams scores it. Duran. One score for Duran without reciting the points. We're on a five-point must system. Israel Rogarich scores it. Duran. Duran as successfully as we expected to defend the lightweight title. scores it. Duran, the winner, and still... Duran, your unanimous, unanimous decision. Travel arrangements made through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. Fly the friendly skies of United, where you're the boss. Howard Cosell, so long.